I want to talk about retrieves. <clears throat> we've, we've been talking for seven hours, I think, right now, right in that zone. <clears throat> and this is the thing I want to talk most about because I truly believe, and I, and I swear to you, all the Kelly Gallup flies, all the Russ Madden, whoever flies in the world, they are not efficient without you being efficient at what you're going to do. You have to be good at your retrieve. And pulling the line like this is not a retrieve. It is a one-trick pony. And I would encourage everyone to just learn one, one retrieve. And I don't understand why people want to not fill their quiver with new techniques, right? I want you to learn one retrieve. If you, don't, if you get nothing out of this entire seminar, I just beg you to learn this because as my manager Johnny says, the jerk strip is not a retrieve, it's a way of life. And it should be for anybody who thinks they're a serious streamer angler. If you learn to do a jerk strip and you learn to do it well, you will immediately up your game by 50%. I'm mean, going to walk you through, and there's, there's basically two retrieves that I preach. One is the jerk strip, and one is the vertical jig or the dying drift jig. They're the same thing, just slow. One's faster than the other. But they're really, truly both jerk strips. And by the way, I did not name that after myself. I was watching Larry Nixon work in a jerk bait. It's, it's kind of like working a jerk bait, and so it's a jerk strip, and it's basically how you do it. For people that don't know, there's a thing in, in the U.S. It's called BASS, Bass, it's a Bassmasters Elite Series, where all these great bass anglers fish, right? And you have to earn your way to the top of this. And one of the guys who is at the top is named Shaw Grigsby, and they have to requalify to get there. And it's the top 10 of the top 15 seem to be the same people. And I asked him once, what's the difference between the top 10 and everyone else in this business? And without a blink, without a breath, without anything, he said, it's their ability to move their lure with their rod and not their reel. Just that fast. That's exactly what I'm telling you. When you learn to do the jerk strip, you're going to learn to move your fly with your rod and not your stripping hand. So when you do this system, the key to it is, is that when you, when you are retrieving the fly, you don't move the fly with your stripping hand, you move it with the rod. You always throw perpendicular to the flow. I'm going to throw cross stream. Every single part of it has a nuance, right? And the first one is how the fly hits the water. I talked about this earlier about how impact sends out a wavelength that triggers the fish, comes to the, uh, comes to the fly almost instantly. And so the first thing it is, the fly comes out, delivers, and hits the water. That is really, really important. So it hits the water hard, you finish your rod low. You finish your rod tip at the water, you turn your rod downstream, and you retrieve your rod away from the fly. We always want the fly to be coming perpendicular to the flow or at a 15 degree angle downstream. Always want the fly to be tracking towards your rod tip, nothing else. So you finish the fly low, bang, it hits the water, drop your rod, and you'll see my rod tip is frequently in the water. It'll touch the water. So we finish down, you point the fly, the rod at the fly, you drop your rod, your hands are together, your line's under your stripping finger. Some people strip with one, some with two. If you open your hand up and it automatically goes to two, leave it. Whatever it is, don't fight that. I, I watch people do that all the time. Should I do one or two? And they're, they're thinking about it. Don't think. Just go like this. And if it's two, it's two. I never let the line out of my left hand. When I do a cast for this, I go back, I drift, and I drop three feet of line roughly. That, that'll load my rod. I'll come forward. This is not a dry fly cast. I come forward. I finish the rod at the water, at the fly. Rod goes down. My hands are together. And I animate the rod with my back hand. All right? If it's the other direction, you got to go this direction. So I'm over here. I hit the rod, strip the excess to point the rod tip back at the fly. You've got to remember you're trying to get the rod tip at the fly, rod tip at the fly, rod tip at the fly. 
And so when I, when I jerk the rod, strip the excess, every time pointing the fly, pick up the excess line in my left hand, my rod's always tight. So that allows you to go as many, many hits to that fly as you want, as long as you pick up that excess. If you notice, as I hit the water with the fly, ah, damn it, little guy. As I hit the water to the fly, the fly to the water, my rod's low and I'm immediately I can move the fly. So I'm, it hits and I move the fly. It's, it's instant. When you're jerk stripping, your hand should never leave pretty much where we are right here. You'll know if you're doing it wrong. If, you are, if you're doing one or the other, if you're doing this at the same time, if you do that, what you're going to see is you'll end up like this. You'll turn your back because you can't catch up to the fly. If that happens to you, if you end up with your rod past the bow of the boat, it means that you're, you're doing the things at the same time. You're stripping and you're pulling on the rod. You notice that my rod never leaves. I hit it down in the boat right there and everything's happening right there. I don't move my rod, I don't end up on the back side of the boat. And then once you're good at it, you throw the line, you're out here, instead of doing jerk the rod like this, one big one, and pull the excess, you now say, well, this is a little shiner, and they swim like that, right? Then you go pat, 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 and you do one or two, maybe three. Tap, 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 pick the excess, tap, 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 pick the excess. When you throw a perpendicular to the flow or at a 15 degree upstream, you are immediately going to get the top, the surface is going to be the fastest water. It's going to push a bow into your line. So your line's going to go like this, right? So anything you touch, anything you do with that rod tip will animate the fly. It's not static. You never have a slack line when you streamer fish. When you get really good at it, you can shimmy the thing. You can like, you just kind of a lot of little movement and you can watch your fly. Johnny's just incredible at this way better than I am. He can make his fly quiver. It just goes, it's this craziest looking thing and it's super effective. Fish just attack that thing, right? It's all about moving that fly with your rod tip. You never jerk and strip at the same time. Say that three times at a cocktail party. Phew. Jerk, strip, jerk, strip, not jerk, strip like that. You don't do them at the same time. I guarantee you're going to. When you first start, you're going to go, because you are programmed, most, unless you've never done this, you're programmed to do this with your fly line. Jerk the rod, pull the excess, jerk the rod, pull the excess. There's a thing in fly fishing. We do not practice fishing. We do not practice fly tying. People tie a fly, but they don't practice. They get to the same point that they screw up every time and go, shit, I hate this part. But they don't go just to that part and do that part. You want to learn how to spin hair? Take that much hair and burn it. Just do it. You'll know it. At the end of that, you'll know everything. When you do this, cut your fly off. Cut your hook off so you know you can't catch a fish and your brain will let you think better. But if you go out and you simply fish and you don't practice this, it'll take you a while. So to help you if you're not going to do what I said and practice it, go to some place where there's, you don't think there's any fish. That's even better. Just your brain will make you want to fish when you start. So practice it. I want you to be able to see your fly move twice in a foot. If you can master that you go tap, tap, strip the excess, tap, tap, you will immediately become in another level. You will immediately be able to elicit a strike that you are not going to get with just this. It's not the fly. It is not the fly. I make a lot of money off these flies. I, I, my, my life is flies, right? It's not the fly. It's how you animate the fly. It's how well you can make you, how well you can sell to the trout that that piece of crap that's all fuzzy and doing this stuff is supposed to look like something. You've got to sell that movement. The movement's what sells the fly. Jerk the rod, strip the excess, jerk the rod, strip the excess. Do that in slow motion. Don't go, okay, I got to rip this fly. I got to rip this fly. I got to rip this fly. I don't wear those little things you put on your finger condoms or the hell they are. I don't wear those. I never get one because I'm never, I'm never jerking against tension. I jerk the fly, strip the excess. If you do them at the same time, you're going to cut your finger, right? And then you got to wear one of those little 
things. And so pop it and do it. So just pop that rod, learn to do it. If you can't get this, if it's just like, oh, I'm going out of my mind, right? Take it and release your left hand. Throw the fly out, get your, finish your rod low, put the line across your finger and let go completely. Just let go and then just hit the rod. Just, just hit it twice. Throw it out, it lands up here, and then reach and draw it all out. Put your hand up and do it again. It'll take five minutes. It'll take five minutes and you'll be done. You'll figure it out immediately. But if you just go fishing and try to do it and it doesn't come right away, you're gonna continuously do that and you're gonna get pissed off and you'll start pulling the rope again. Now, that's a reactionary thing. It doesn't have to be because you have control of the fly. You can, you can run your fly slow. You can just, you don't have to, and by the way, you don't have to do it fast or hard. You can just do this. You, you, know, can, you can serpentine your flies that way, right? They just, you can make them do this, you just pull like that. That leads us into the vertical jig. And I showed flies, I showed jig flies, I showed a couple crayfish and stuff like that. And it's really imperative, if you wanna really be A-game in this thing, that it's not only that you can pull it sideways and come across the river and just rip the hell out of it. It's gonna be a point where you're gonna have a food-based bite, right? And you need your fly to do this. You need it to slow down. You need it to be more leachy. You need it, need it, need it, need it to be something less than escaping minnow. Our, our life is escaping minnow, right? Well, not everything's an escaping minnow. Crayfish don't really swim like a smolt does. And a, a three inch fry doesn't swim like a par does. Everything has a different style. A leech doesn't swim like a crayfish, doesn't swim like a minnow. A leech swims like a leech. So you need a retrieve that gets something that does this. You can jig a lot of bait fish. You can, you can do a lot of this with a, with a bait fish imitation. And nobody does it. Nobody takes a bait fish imitation and does anything but burn the hell out of it. Try jigging one of these things, especially in your cooler water temperatures. If you're a cooler water temperature angler, you better have a slow game. Because if your only game is fast, you're gonna leave 70% of your fish on the table. The vertical jig is no different absolutely no difference than the, the jerk strip. One goes low like this, a vertical goes vertical. Your rod goes up and you strip the excess. And it gives you the ability to pick your fly up and you can stutter it up, you can tap it up, 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 and then you, but you always lift with your rod and strip all the excess and that's the key. When you strip the excess, you strip it slow enough that you don't impede the descent of the fly but you're constantly in contact. Sometimes I'll take neutral buoyancy flies and I'll peg them on the nose. I take a 3 16 tungsten bead. I generally run loops and I'll just slide that right over the loop. On a bait fish, I tend to pick it up in like two or three steps. So it's kind of doing this and then it's super slow, let it drop really slow. And most of the time I see my fly line do that. Just like if, if you've ever fished a soft plastic, when they go down, they eat it on the drop. They're looking for crayfish on the drop. Very seldom they eat them on the pickup. But you're gonna pick up with your rod. Your rod will get up to whatever degree, whatever, ever, how much you want that fly to rise. And then you're just gonna slowly drop and you get all the excess, the, every bit that you lifted, you have to pick up. You never take your line's eyes off the line or in the general vicinity that you think your fish are. And, I, and I'll tell you, there's, especially from a boat, there are a lot of visual eats that you don't understand when you first start doing it. And all you're gonna see is mouth. You're gonna see a white flash underneath there. And then you're gonna go, well, yeah, whoa, it's a fish, right? It's, you will not feel it or see it. It's just you watch, but you watch your line, watch where you think your fly is. If you see a flash, you pick up, right? So it's pick up, 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 strip all your excess. And the only difference between a dying drift and a vertical jig is the speed. So a dying drift is like if you, you're just trying to imitate minnows that are kind of stuck in the mid, you know, just kind of like this, just lazy. Fish cutthroat a lot, they're lazy as hell. All right, they love that. They love that super slow stuff. Just, ooh, look at me, I'm dying. Like that. Vertical jig, a little faster. Dying drift, a little slower. Vertical jig, incredible for early season crayfish patterns, and it's particularly good in early season for leech patterns. So you just get this 
you know, worm looking thing that does this. I tend to do a little blend of these. So there's really two retrieves. I kind of fish a one kind of in between a lot where it's a, it's a jerk strip, but I just come off my shoulder, kind of a jig like this. It's just how I've adapted for me. If it's gonna be a reactionary bite, I'm ripping that thing. It's bold movements. And if I wanna fish, I discussed a fly called the flatliner. When I wanna do that one, I pull my rod three feet and immediately go back at it. Three feet, boom, just like that. That fly stalls, that's a stall. Whenever you stop a fly by intent, you make it stop. It didn't just stop. You don't get to call it because you screwed up. It's like, wham, I need it to stop. And I want it to get caught in the current and I want it to go, and I want the fly to actually do something that looks like it's injured, right? I'm trying, I'm not just stalling it to see if I can stop. I'm trying to make the fly do something. I go, wham, strip it excess, set it for a second to three, tap, tap. Fly goes like that twice. You can't believe it. Trout will come underneath that thing and lock on you two inches underneath your fly and just sit there while it's stalled. You tap that thing, explosion, it's over. I can't pull that fly line like that and then go little movements. It just doesn't work. You want control with your rod. You're always in control of your fly if you're always under tension with your fly line. So it's pretty simple once you get it, once you learn it, you get it down two movements. Ideally, when you're a superstar, you get three, four inch movements as opposed to two sixes. You're always working on feet, right? You're looking per foot. So I'd like the fly to move three times in a foot under my control. When you get that down, I guarantee you, your rate's gonna go through the roof.